Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome on today's webinar, Templates and Sharing, More Effective Workflow of Joint Design. At first, one recommendation, if you want to put some question, just type in to the question tab and send it to us. We will take care of that and we will try to answer during the webinar or after. Who is presenting today? Today, David, David Kuchera will uh, show you really interesting stuff and I will participate too. My name is Vít Hurčík. And today agenda. We will talk about templates, 3D scene, right button, right mouse button click, and everything that can be uh, driven by the 3D scene. We will play a little game, set of simple connection. We will talk about user-defined properties and sharing of these properties. And we will do complicated design with templates. At, and then the last part will be cloud tools. So sit down, lay back and enjoy. David, it's your turn. Hello, everybody. Thank you. I will take a presenter and show you my screen. It's OK. We can continue. So on the picture, you can see so-called intuitive wizard. And this wizard guides you and helps you to speed up the process of modeling. In the first step, you will select class, then topology, and finally design. Or if you want, you can change some parameters such as steel grade, bolt assembly, or concrete grade. And directly you can create your connection. So, so your connection is uh, ready and you can calculate. You can receive results, you can check the stresses, strain, or you can directly uh, print a report. So this is a very nice feature. Then we implemented another improvement, so-called parametric templates. You can use it from version 9.1, uh, sorry. This version was released this year in autumn 2018. And these parametric templates help you connect members to each other. They can adapt to the various cross sections. They are able to stretch or replace the bolts. You can adjust the thickness of connected plates, for instance. A really very useful feature. Or if you want, you can use right mouse button. All the settings are available in the 3D window under the right mouse button. It means we can do a lot of things with only just mouse. So really you can speed up your process of modeling. And now Vitya will show you how to use all of these new features and how to do simple structure with more joints very quickly. So it's yours, Vitya. You can continue. Thank you, David. So let's just talk about the game. We want to show you how the use of templates is effective when we uh, use them to design connections. We have this kind of frame, three connections. A welded cross section for the column, 
uh, and uh, we will design and check these three joints from the steel frame uh, by using templates and the right mouse button and 3D scene. And we will just for the for the fun we will check out the time. We will stop it. So I prepared everything. We can start the stopwatch. Let's just begin. We can begin with the anchoring. And we will use this uh, template. Of course, you can use the other one, but this one will help you if you will just adapt it a little bit after generation of the project. And I want to adapt my cross section. Sorry, I want a welded one. And I want to adapt the thickness of the base plate because I think it will be more rigid and of course I will increase the diameter of the balls because I think it's more appropriate to have big ones. And I have to input some relevant load effects. 28, I think that's enough. Let's calculate it. And what about results? Whoa, one of my anchors is failing. Why? Okay. The concrete cone breakout failure. So just increasing the offset of the uh, foundation and for example, the length of the anchor. Just calculate it again. And it should be all right now. Great, so let's just do the, another connection. Uh, in the middle part, we have T connection. So I will start from a blank uh, template and I will use the parametric template so you can see that it will adapt to our uh, cross sections. And I will choose this one with a haunch. Great, and let's change the internal forces. Okay, calculate it. Oh, what's happening? The iteration process goes down. Uh, the application cannot find the equilibrium. So I will cancel this uh, analysis because it's uh, useless for us. We can wait for a long time. And what now? I can see that the bolts are not in the most effective position. So I will move them a little bit up. And I think maybe the thickness of the end plate can be higher. Sure, I want rigid connection. And now it's better. Great, we already have the results and the joint passed the code trick. But from my, from my point of view, I really want to uh, modify the column because I want to add uh, uh, stiffeners too. So I can adjust it by a template too. And I want two of them because I believe it's better to have two stiffeners in the right position. Great. It passed the code check, but still it's not as good as wanted. So maybe eight millimeters thick uh, stiffeners, it's enough. Great, we passed the code check and the, uh, and the connection is designed. Let's proceed for the last one at the top of the frame. And we will use the same approach. Sorry, first I will choose the 
cross section of the um, column. And now I will connect it by a template. Great. Let's add some relevant load effects. For example, minus 28 and 36. We will calculate it. And the iteration process goes well. So great, we have a result. But I think we can adjust the stiffeners and this in the same way like in the middle joint. So we can save some uh, expenses because we will have the same plate. Great, so we just finished and let's check out our time. Approximately five minutes, which is great, don't you think? So with templates we designed this kind of steel frame in five minutes. Without the templates, it will be a matter of at least dozen tens of minutes. So using templates is effective. So let's proceed to another theoretical intro uh, to the user-defined properties, and we will talk about the bolts too. Uh, what is our library? Our library is material and product range library. It's a complicated, <laughs> no, it's not. How can we access it? In the connection application, there is a tab of materials and this icon MPRL. How it looks like? It's just a simple window with few parts where you can find a tree of the um, of, uh, of the um, grades, steel, and etc., and a few uh, features. And what we can do, we can import, export data, we can edit it, and we can delete. And that's all, but it's still enough. And we will show this in a, a real example. But first, I want to talk with you about the bolt behavior because our bolts are nonlinear springs. Uh, uh, we created for you a small study, uh, the, the behavior of M20 bolts, three grades and three cases of loads. What do you think will be the same bolt forces in each case? Let's check it out. In the first example, uh, uh, this connection was loaded with bending moment 10 kilonewton meters, and we have uh, M20 grade 4.8, M20 grade 6.8, and 10.9. And it, as you can see, the tension force in the bottom bolt was the same for all three bolt grades. And why? Because we are still here and the um, elastic range of uh, deformation or in the elastic, uh, on the elastic branch of working diagram. But if we continue to increase the bending moment, uh, we can see that here with three 30 kilonewton meters per meter, we are here already at the plastic area of deformation for the lowest um, bolt grade. So the, def the uh, uh, due to this fact, um, the redistribution of stresses already begins to other components, so uh, it, the tension force cannot rise more at the same like the, with the other two uh, bolt grades. And the last example, with 50 kilonewton meters per meter, uh, we can see that we are at the almost top of the uh, tension resistance for uh, this kind of bolts and all three 
um, values of tension force in the bolts varies. Why? Because uh, we already are at the end of the uh, plastic deformation area for the 6.8 and we are at the end of elastic for the 10.9. So the conclusion is tension force in the bolts cannot be the same for the same for the different uh, bolt grades. And why? Because bolts are nonlinear springs with low deformation diagram like you see. And that's all for the theory. Let's jump in uh, to the practical demonstration. I will uh, turn on um, the connection application and we can start with a blank template uh, in which we will define our materials, our steel material and our um, um, uh, our bolt material, bolt grade. So let's jump into the material step and here we have material and product range library. But we will not use it right now. We will define the steel and the bolt grade first. So let's add a new steel and because we have an old project uh, that we want to uh, recalculate again and we are not 100% sure about the um, about the material we want to edit our material to be a little bit more on the safe side so I will edit this material to uh, just slightly different properties. I will decrease the uh, these properties about 10 megapascals and I will save this material. Now I can save it with a different name for example and I will save it with a name for David because I will share it with him and to the webinar table. Great. And now the bolt grade. I will start with 5.6 for example. Edit it. It will be my 5D bolts and I know, I know that this bolts has 280 megapascals as a limit. So let's just save it. 5D. Okay. Okay, we are already having there. And let's jump into the material and product range library. And you can see that here in the tree, we already have our steel. You can also edit the properties here. So I can switch it here. David's material. I can adjust the values of course too. And let's figure it out how to export it. It's simple. Just click here and export to CVS format. I will save it onto my um, desktop and I will do the same with the of my uh, previously defined bolts. So I just exported my uh, user defined data and now I want to send it to my colleague. So David I will insert it to the email. And let's jump back into the presentation. Now it's turned to David. 
he will show you how to import the materials. So, <clears throat> thank you. I will continue with the next practical demo. Our next example will show you BIMLink. We will export connection from sub 2000. And with the help of the templates, we will create a connection. So we will use all the features which can make your connection design much more easier. So let's start. We prepared a structure in sub 2000. It's our global model. Of course, it's calculated. And from this structure, we won't export one of the connections, this one. In all the supported softwares, we have our plugins. And with help of these plugins, we are able to connect to IDEA Statica and to export data. So let's do it for sub 2000. Let's launch so-called code check manager. In the first step, we have to choose beams and uh, nodes. So in one step, I will select everything. So node which represents the connection and all the connected members. Then the second step, we have to select desired code. You can choose Euro code, American code, Canadian code, Australian code, and last, uh, sorry, not last, but the next year we will add uh, Russian SNP. So for this time, I want to use Eurocode. Let's click on this button and uh, automatic data transfer was started. Now I want to make this and this member as one. So I will merge these two beams and I can proceed to the next table. If you want, you can check what combinations are used. We have two combinations, combination one and two. You can check coefficients, load cases, and we can finish our connection. At this time, export was started and IDEA Statica will be launched with the connection. So we transferred geometry, of course, load cases and topology. And we can continue with our design. First of all, I can skip back to presentation and I will show you what we will do. As Vitya mentioned, there were some special requirements for this uh, model. So we have to use some different steel and bolt grade, which is not in the library. And then we have to change partial safety factors. It was requirement which comes from the investor to make this connection more conservative. Now I will show you how to do that. In the first step, we will change these uh, partial safety factors. So let's change partial safety factor for steel members and for connection 1.3. And now we can confirm. You have two possibilities. You can save it. So it means for the next projects, it will be the same. Or if you realize 
you did some mistake or you want change something back to the default values, you can use reset. But now I can proceed and I can do it as it is. So the code setup was changed. Of course, we can check it. It's really here, 1.1 and 1.3. In the next step, we have the second special requirement. We can change uh, the bolt grade and the steel grade. Maybe you can remember that uh, my colleague sent me an email with the new parameters. Here it is. We have two files, bolt grade and steel grade. So you can share it if you want with your company, with your colleagues. Of course, I don't have to show you how you can save it. I already did it, so it's on my PC. And now we can import these two files and I can show you how. So let's change steel. To change this uh, library, we can use mentioned material and property range library. And now let's import the steel. Here it is. Let's open it. And the steel was imported. If you want, you can check it. You can check the values. Really, the name is the same as we created. So now we can save it and change the steel grade. And it's done. The steel grade was changed. Was changed. And let's do the same for the bolts. Again, we have to open this library and import the second file for the bolt grade. Let's open it and we can check it. It's here. So we can close this library. And now uh, let's add some new bolt. So a new bolt assembly. Let's use this one. And sorry. Yes, here it is. And here we can change the board grade. And the board grade was changed. If you want, you can check it. Really, it is used 5D boards. Now we can go back to the design and we can proceed with our connection. I will connect member 25 to the column and because I'm lazy, I can do it with templates. Let's use right mouse button and select to which member it will be connected. And of course, let's select uh, template. And it's done really very quick. Then for the opposite beam, let's do the same the same template and the same boards. At this moment, we can stop for a moment because you could see that were used or was used one template, one the same template for the different beams. And you can notice what was done. So the thickness of the stiffeners, so for the higher beam is 10 millimeter and for the IPE 240 is uh, eight millimeter. So it's different. The bolts were stretched for 
the higher beam we can check it in editor let's display drawing so from the edge it's 30 and 45 and the middle distance is 150 and let's check it for beam ipe 330 what happened so really the site values dimensions are the same and it stretches the beam oh, sorry the beam and the bolts so really these uh, templates are adaptive and of course the thickness effective thickness of the welds changed here it's five millimeter and on the opposite side for smaller beam it's uh, four millimeter so we can continue and uh, connect member 35 and member 37. Again, I will use right mouse button. I want to connect this member to the column. And now I want to use this template and desired bolts. And it's done. For this time, let's uh, switch off this cut because this cut connected beam to the web of the column. You can see the welds. Let's cut it off. Uh, let's turn it off. And we can proceed with the opposite beam and let's connect it with the template with angle profiles. And finally, we won't connect the last beam, which isn't connected. So this is this one. And with the mouse, let's select the desired part of the connection. And it's done our joint has final design. Now we can proceed and we can calculate it. So you could see the beam export, change of the library, change of the partial safety factors, how templates were applied. Really, this procedure was very fast. And now in a moment, I will obtain the results. So in the left corner, in the 3D scene, 3D scene, the results, the summary of the results are displayed. I can check some bolts aren't satisfactory. Let's make some modification. I can copy this connection and uh, add some row of the bolts. So you can see that one row of the bolts was added and we can try if it's okay or not. Of course, I prepared this connection for you. So now I know or I hope it will be okay, but uh, you can play with the connection in more different ways. You can, do, you can do whatever you want. You can change plates, you can change operations. It depends on you. So in the moment we have the results and now, now our connection is okay, so I'm satisfied. We can display the results, stress, strain, bolt forces or mesh, whatever you want. And I can show you how to share your connection with uh, 
your colleagues on social media. You can share it on LinkedIn or Facebook. I will show you the first option. Let's share it on LinkedIn, this picture. Click with the right mouse button to the 3D scene and just only click on share on LinkedIn. I can label my post webinar and share it. Software gives me an info that post was successfully shared and I can check it for you on LinkedIn if it's uh, okay. So I can check my posts. It, it takes a few seconds because the data have to be transferred from IDEA to, to LinkedIn. So I have to refresh it maybe once or more times. Yes, and it's here. You can see that I shared a connection, the stresses, the mesh, and it's all from me. So I can pass the word to Vitya and uh, you can continue. Thank you, David, for the uh, practical demonstration of our uh, tools and applications. And uh, we are in front of the last part of our webinar, we will talk about cloud tools. And right now we have three clouds, cloud tools for you available. You already know Connection Light. It's the light version of our desktop application. It's for free and you can calculate there a lot of predefined uh, connections. Still there is a really big variability and you can use it on your own. You can calculate it, check it, and you can even see the detailed results. What is new is an effectivity, cal effectivity calculator. If you are a trialist or if you want to purchase our applications, you can uh, check if uh, if uh, it's uh, for you um, okay, if you will be interested, if you can save some time or if you can save some money with these applications. And I want to show you a little bit more of that because it's our brand new um, uh, online tool. Just visit our homepage ideastatica.com com the webinar application slows down our internet connection so be patient please here is the cloud tab and by this we will switch to our cloud applications all cloud applications are free uh, and you can use it by your own uh, without any restrictions. Uh, we can use our time. Uh, please type in your questions. We already answered uh, three or four of them. Uh, so you can have time to type in anything. Here is the effectivity calculator. It launches our application and we will go through that uh, briefly. Uh, there is a set of uh, 
of the questions which you can answer. How much, for example, how many of your connections are simple, moderate, or complex? So I think, uh, for example, 60% of my connections are simple, 10% moderate, and the rest are complex. How long does it take me to, des to design that connections? The simple ones, 20 minutes, maybe the moderate already, for example, 60 minutes because I have to use Excel spreadsheet file and all my knowledge. And the complex one, well, that's a matter of luck only for me without any application. So, few hours at least. I work only with David, with my colleague, and I think 50% uh, of our time we are doing the uh, the um, connections, and I think the cost of our hour of engineering is approximately 18 euros. We are using um, sub 2000, and that's all. And you can see with our application we can save one and 135 hours uh, during one year and this amount of money. So our invest investment will be paid back in one month if we buy one Idea Statica Steel lifetime seat. And it's just a tool that can help you to think about if you want to or if you don't want to buy it. The last of the three is our project viewer and it can be used as a, um, as a tool for sharing your work, your projects with uh, the colleagues which don't have uh, Idea Statica connection applications. You can send them a project. Yes, they cannot open it, but they can open it in this project viewer and see all your design, all data uh, necessary to prepare drawings, for example, or to prepare uh, uh, enough um, data for manufacturer. You can see here on the right side uh, small drawings of our plates uh, with uh, information uh, about all entities like bolts, welds, and etc. And you can even download the 3D DVG file uh, for of that um, joint. And you use it as a background information for your uh, for your drawings. So these three uh, cloud application available online. And uh, we can proceed to questions and answers. I can see that during the webinar you placed several of them and me or Dave, David already uh, answered them. And there is one question uh, from customer uh, for David. Uh, how we can uh, insert the templates for the Idea Statica connection. Can user do that? Now I'm not sure about the question. Uh, maybe if you mean if user can insert its own template, so just now it's not possible, but if you want some some connection so please uh, send it to our help desk so it's helpdesk at idastatica.com and we will decide if we can edit or not but just now we have uh, more than 120 templates so you can use these templates So thank you, David, for your answer. And uh, we are at the uh, last few minutes of our webinar. 
uh, just small reminder after the webinar there will be a survey just 30 seconds and if you will uh, fill it in you will help us to improve the webinars for you so please take your time recording of this webinar will be av available on our homepage at and on our YouTube channel within three days from now and if you want to try our Ideastatic application, just ask for the trial version. And please don't forget, we have resource center with a lot of information, tutorials, videos, verifications, theoretical backgrounds, etc. We recorded our webinars. You can find it all on our home page. Uh, we will have one uh, more webinar in this year 2018. It will be the last Connection Wednesdays and the team from United Kingdom, Theodore and Kostis, will bring it to you next week. So be ready for the customer experience, customer project. You can register on this webinar at our home page. And this is the end of our webinar. Thank you for your time. And I hope we will meet each other again in 2019. Have a nice day. Bye.